Now let me give you an example um, of this. Um, <clears throat> suppose we look at a uh, drawing I will do over here. And uh, suppose you're a, uh, you know, a two-year-old child, and I ask you, Susie, what, what do you see here? And you will say, of course, that you see a horse. And so you learn the word horsey. And we might look at a number of other right, horses. So I'll draw them as well. My uh, years of art school training are paying off here. And there's another one. And then by contrast, say, there's another little animal here that is much smaller and it's got pointy ears. Okay. And I say, what's that, Susie? You said, that's horse. What's this? Well, that's also horse. What's this, Susie? That's also horse. And you say, what's that? Well, that's not horse. That's, that's dog, right? And so this, uh, Susie can then see the difference between the dog and the horses. And we put all of those in one category. Uh, and then we come to understand horse. So we have a slightly more abstract concept here of horse, and we've distinguished that from the, the concept of dog. And also using our senses, we can see the differences between the horses and the dogs in this case. All right, suppose then we uh, are carrying on teaching Susie uh, her, her, uh, her word lessons, trying to expand her vocabulary and understanding of the world. So we go for a walk in the woods, and uh, we look at some of these objects, right? And uh, we say, what is that, Susie? And she says, well, that's a tree, right? And so we taught her the concept of tree, some kind of conifer there. And we draw some more here. So we look at that one. There's another tree. And right, there's another tree, right? and so forth. And then there might be, but say, by contrast, some little tiny thing down the bottom Right, that we're looking at as we're walking along here. And we say that's a uh, flower of some, of some sort or other. So we put all of these in a category, and Susie assigns the abstract uh, 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 word designator word uh, tree for that. And so now she knows tree, she knows flower, she knows dog, she knows horse, right, and so forth. OK, then we ask Susie to perform a bigger abstraction. So far, we're using our senses, and we're doing a little bit of, uh, of rational categorization as well. We say, all right, Susie, what does this have in common with this? Suppose we now have these on a board, as I have, or, or in a picture here. Uh, what, what do they have in common? What are they both? And maybe we'll even give her one other set of categories over here. Suppose I, I draw some shapes on the board here, just some. Uh, some, some asterisks, and I say, what are all of those things? Well, those are asterisks, say, in contrast to this, which is just a, which just a square. But then I say, Susie, this, this, and this, what do those all have in common? Uh, and then we might draw her attention to one, two, three, right? One, two, three. One, two, three, we're trying to teach her some numerical concepts. Then at a certain point, she says, oh, that's three trees, that's three horses, that's three asterisks. These are all three. Okay, good. Now what have we done here? Well, we have now introduced a new abstract symbol, right? This stands for anything, right, that has threeness. It can stand for this, it can stand for this, it can stand for this in an open-ended kind of way, even though asterisks, horses, and trees are all very different in all of their particular uh, uh, dimensions. Nonetheless, they share something abstract in common. They share threeness, right, with each other. Okay, Susie is now five years old. Suppose we uh, uh, have got basic numbers under our belt, and we want Susie to start doing more, more uh, difficult things. So we have uh, done this with Susie. We've got three, and now I'm adding this to count them with me. Susie, one, two, three, four. I've done four, right, more stars. So I had three stars. I added four stars. I used that symbol for that. So three, four. How many stars do we have all together here, Susie? And then Susie, at a certain point, learns, ah, that's seven. Now what we have now here is a completely abstract formula. 
right? This is an abstraction, this is an abstract operator, this is an abstraction, this is an abstract operator, this is another numerical abstraction, and Susie gets it. And then at a certain point, she should be able, for example, even without counting on her fingers, even without having diagrams, be able to take abstract numerical concepts and uh, manipulate them in her, in her reason. And then at a certain point, uh, Susie now gets into uh, to, uh, to middle school, and we're asking Susie to do things like, well, suppose you have five, Susie, and you want to uh, uh, get 12, right? You need to add how much? And so we'll put an X in there. So five plus X equals 12. Solve for X, please, Susie. But now notice what we've introduced here. We've introduced an X, which is a, a variable. And then a variable in this context is an abstract, on, an abstraction on any number, right? It can stand for, for any number, right, whatsoever. And uh, after we uh, get Susie comfortable with doing these sorts of things, she probably now wants to be called Susan rather than Susie. We then uh, are going to start teaching her things like x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Right. Uh, we might teach her the Pythagorean theorem, right, for example, and teach her this formula here. But what do we have up here? We don't have any uh, digits at all. Instead, it's entirely variables plus exponents, and we want her to be able to, to do that sort of thing in a manipulative fashion. Now, let me grab another color here and just point out why from the idealist perspective, this is a beautiful thing. What we are doing in this case here is starting when Susie is very young cognitively at the level of concretes, right, at the level of particulars, at the level of things that are physical, right, dogs, trees, horses, and so forth. And then what we're doing with Susie is taking her up the, uh, the, the chain of being to a realm that is now abstract, uh, uh, purely mental, right, when we are doing these operations right in our head, and completely general, right, or generic. At this level of Susie's uh, cognitive operation, she is primarily using her senses, right? she is a sensorially driven being. At this point, she is now a mature thinking, thinker, a human thinker, she's using reason and a pure reason. And it's a pure reason because on the idealist account, by the time you start doing higher order mathematics like this, you don't need the sensory inputs anymore. You can purify your thought from any sort of physicalistic uh, understanding uh, and, and consider uh, the, the mathematical truths uh, for, for, for what they are in, in their, their own rights. Also, what's true is these things come and go, right? The horses and the trees, right, and so forth, but three plus four uh, remains the same. So those particular things in nature are all subject to change. Nonetheless, the, uh, the higher truth, three plus uh, four equals seven, that's eternally true. The Pythagorean theorem was true back when Pythagoras discovered it. It was true before he discovered it, according to the idealists. It still is true, and it will always be true in its exact perfect formulation uh, uh, as handed down through all of time.